If yeah. I could find something at the bottom, the bottom of life, the bottom of the ocean, the bottom of your heart, your grief, death. If I could find something useful to bring to the surface to help other people. Yes. Then maybe I'd consider going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Chronology of Water, which I think hasn't been published over here before. No, it's coming. It, yes. We think uh, March. It's so beautiful. I read bits of it online. I found online when I was writing my book. And I'm, it's thrilling that everyone's going to get to read it now. Thank you. Can you remember the first time you swam? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, when I was about three, I started, anytime our family would be near water, mm -hmm. like a pool or a river or the ocean or a lake or anything, I would jump in and I would sink to the bottom because I was three and I didn't know how to swim. <laughs> and so my family gave me swim lessons when I was four um, in Seattle, Washington, yeah. where they, they had a tendency to throw you in and, you know, force you to survive. Oh, wow. And the lakes in Seattle, Washington are freezing. So I would come out completely blue. Oh my um, but it didn't matter because there's something about water that makes me feel uh, comfortable and safe. And I know not everybody feels that. Yeah. And then when you got older... Then I was you... a competitive swimmer. Yeah. Um, and that started when I was six. And that's, that's early to be competitive at anything. Well, I, it wasn't something I wanted or yeah. thought about, but we had a community pool, kind of <laughs> like this one. And this summer, there was a swim team. And the thing about that was it got me out of my father's house. Yes, it was, again, it was a sort of sanctuary, a place. Not even sort of. Yeah. <laughs> was, I, I wish I could have stayed there forever. And so... Um, I didn't really, I had a skill that was already in me. Nobody mm -hmm. taught me how to do it. It just, um, I was very quickly good at it in a way that makes no sense. And did you feel even from then, like, this is my place? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I wanted to, I would stay in the shower too long. <laughs> <laughs> There's a bit in Chronology of Water where you say, in, in the water, I looked okay. Right. And I, I kind of had to go back and reread it because I realised that that could effectively have two meanings. It could mean I looked like I was doing okay, right. like I was coping. Right. Or it could mean I, you know, I felt like I was acceptable physically. Both. But yeah. And it really, it really works because you can, you can scream into the water and it helps your lungs and it helps your swimming and I've certainly like screamed to the bottom of the ocean. I actually wanted to ask you about that if there was for you, can I ask you a yeah, question? Yeah. If there was emotional release yeah. that I, I actually couldn't find in any other places in life, maybe the forest, Yeah. go out and primal scream or something, but there's a release that can happen in water where you don't have to be scared of rage or grief yeah. or pain. And there's something really magic about the sort of not being able to hear sounds properly, which also frees you to make whatever sound you yeah. want to. Yeah. I can remember when I was trying to learn, because I only learned to swim properly three years ago. I heard that. <laughs> I was trying to learn the breathing and I did it by, in the end, I did it by sort of shouting and humming and like going, Argh. Oh, that makes <laughs> sense the because there's a rhythm. Yeah, exactly. And you have to find the rhythm to do it so that, <laughs> you know, you're not sucking in water. So you had this sort of place of sanctuary in the team sports, but then you sort of failed <laughs> to a I degree. Did. I you did. needed water for other things. So That's right. How did you kind of reach that reckoning that, you know, heading for the Olympics wasn't going to be your path? Well, um, the year I was closest to that realm was the year Jimmy Carter 
um, held the United States team back. Uh -huh. And I think I've thought about it a lot. And mm. I think because my home life and my family and my father had transgressed and broken down yes. a story that uh, I was told about what a family is. Yes. And being raised Catholic turned into a bad thing, and it was a story that had broken down. Yeah. When that happened too, it's like, well, then you can trust nothing in the world. Yeah. Because I've been doing this for my whole life, aiming at a thing that I could touch, and yeah. if that's gone too... All the narratives were yeah, sort of broken. Falling apart, yeah. broken, falling apart. Um, and so then I kind of fell apart. Um, I think and you, you really went for it. I did. I think there's a line in the book that said, I arrived at college with a bottle of vodka and something about rage. Yeah. And that was true. Then water sort of became intense consolation when you suffered grief. Yes. So my daughter died the day that she was born. Yeah. And I... I don't know why I wasn't one of those women who gets counseling and gets help right away and well, because all makes the it. Well, yeah, maybe I do know why. A bit of a letdown <laughs> so far. <laughs> but I just didn't emerge from it uh, yeah. quickly, yeah. and in fact, I went the other direction and I went towards psychosis, mm. and I mean literally. Yes. And I ended up. Um, just gravitating toward a group of homeless people that lived under an overpass freeway. And I found solace yeah. with people I didn't have to explain things to. Yes. And with people whose lives were also broken in a way. Mm. And I, I don't, I didn't stay very long. It was under two years, but I couldn't feel okay in the normal person world. Yeah and I felt okay with people who didn't judge me or yeah. ask me anything. But it was a dangerous kind of life and it, it wasn't good for me. Yeah, and you were at points literally sort of hallucinating. Yes. You were, you, it wasn't like, oh, I was so sad. No, you were, I you was were, not having cogent thought. You were really... I was, ha I was not of the <laughs> healthy mammal variety and I had this um, notebook. Yes. A big red notebook that I filled with teeny tiny writing, wow. like pages of gibberish. Yeah. Just vomit of <laughs> blah, blah, nonsensical. But then later in life, when I got health and I got back into school yeah. and I got therapy and medication and all kinds of yeah. things, I looked back at the notebook and there were, there were stories embedded in the gibberish. Little bits. Little pieces. Like, and they were all about girls or women or broken people who managed to save themselves. Yeah. And those turned into my first book, eventually. Yeah. But I'm talking about a kind of decade-long lostness. Yes. For a little while, I wanted to stay. Yeah. I didn't want to Yeah. Um, but something happened around the same time, which is I read a poem by Adrian Rich. Yes. Called Diving Into the Wreck. Right. Have you read it? No. Okay. Someday. Mm -hmm. Go look at it. And partly in the poem, the narrative is about going to the bottom of the ocean. Okay. But in the poem, she finds something useful to bring back to the surface. And so that poem was like, like a lifesaver, um, like, a, like a way back to the top. If yeah. I could find something at the bottom, the bottom of life, the bottom of the ocean, the bottom of your heart your grief, death. If I could find something useful to bring to the surface to help other people, yes. then maybe I'd consider going <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And it turns out maybe that thing was writing. Yes, because The Chronology of Water was originally published eight years ago? Uh, 2011. Yeah, so seven, yeah, seven years ago. Yeah. And it's kind of a cult. Like you, if you, 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 you I think I found some other people at the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> yeah, you, there was like a whole community Apparently. down there. <laughs> Come on, guys, we're heading up. But um, you, you either don't know about it or you're obsessed by it. There's almost no right. middle ground. That's right. So you I have you. found your people. Thing, your people. Yeah. My mer people. Yeah, because it is water is kind to the grieving and the sad, and you you've articulated that almost to an exceptional level, and people really have connected with the book. So then, so, that, then it's worth it. 
Yeah, and but then you you kind of got the double because you negotiated grief and then found the career that had been sort of almost within reach yeah. and sort of then you sort of sometimes self-sabotaged it, sometimes you yeah. were ill. Yeah, I'm still and... me. <laughs> yeah. I but still now want. you've got it. <laughs> it is somewhere to go. It's not a eel anymore. <laughs> no, that's right. That's right. And does that give you a feeling of security that to have manifested something so awful into something that's so powerful? I think what it gives me is the ability... Can I touch you? Of course. Uh, the ability to touch someone besides myself. Yes. In a way that reminds us that we're not alone. Yes. And it's the greatest compliment. Is I thought it was just me. Yeah. And what's your relationship with the water now? Are you like, I've got my career, a uh, hundred lengths every morning, or is it, I can see you late. Uh. <laughs> oh, I, this is going to sound stupid, but I sort of don't believe in exercise. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the minute it's exercise, it's a little less joyful. So, for, but more seriously, for me, it's entirely meditative. Yes. It's entirely a meditative space. I rarely go fast anymore, unless there's like a 15-year-old girl or boy next to me, and then I something animal comes in, and I have to like beat them. Yeah. And then I try to get in the car to drive home after that, and I can't. <laughs> I can't raise my. <laughs> But in a general sense, it's entirely meditative and it helps me be okay in the world. Yes. I'm a lot less okay the second we leave the doors. I'm yes. a lot less okay. It's navigating the regular world that's the difficult for me. Yes. I had a C-section last year and then realized that I didn't have any stomach muscles or they were severed. I know, but I know. <laughs> and, I, and, and I hadn't really ever so strongly engaged with the fact that your core is doing all your steering right. in the water. And it was terrifying because I just couldn't do it. So I do, you, do you have like tips or tricks or is there a move or a word of advice? Because I still sometimes, it's, it's almost exactly a year and I still sometimes have that. When you feel yourself tip forward, it's like a kind of instinct to go, <laughs> That's fascinating. Um, I think it might help to find an image mm -hmm. that is is the way you wish it would feel and be. And for me, that has been a seal. Oh, okay, yes. And the way they dive down, and the way they roll, and the way they uh, are playful and yet strong, and sometimes delicate. And it, if I hold a seal in my head, yeah. I stop worrying about what my body's actually doing <laughs> yes. technique wise or whatever yeah. but they're also magnificent creatures yeah yeah and again but not I think to we be could, underestimated yeah. we could learn a lot yeah a lot. oh that's fascinating and so what's what's next you've got the film of chronology of water which is being trippy. it's i did a yelp when i saw that it was christian christian stewart is i she, did is she i making yelped. it she bought the rights she bought the rights and she's co-writing it and she with wants you. to direct it no she's co-writing it with someone else i but find it's just perfect. like surreal yeah <laughs> and we do have some kind of primal understanding of uh, being a woman in the world and not quite fitting yes because you're one of the things that really shot you to sort of public knowledge was your TED talk about <laughs> being a misfit. Yes. And it's so powerful because it does immediately land everyone in the room or watching in that feeling of my people. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. Like for a second, there. you're yeah. not alone in your weirdness or something. Um, and that was meaningful to me. Although you should know, I almost died on the TED stage because I was so scared. I thought I would poo or pee or die. And how, how has that changed you? Did you, you, you know, it's words, but it was spoken words. It's a lot that. like that other thing we talked about a little bit ago. I have found more people. Yes. Um, and a, a tribe kind of um, realm where we can touch each other occasionally. Yeah. And say, I see you. Or, yeah. you know, you're not alone. And we're still here. Yeah even though some of us are not and don't make it. We can help keep each other going. We can help keep each other alive. And, and I'm grateful for that, even yes. though I almost died. So what's next for you writing-wise? So I have a book of short stories coming soon and a new novel that I'm ready to embark okay. on. And oh, so it's sort of sitting yeah, up it's there ready Actually, to it's get. here, oh, okay. a little bit here. 
um, and another non-fiction book. And do you feel excited for it? There's, some, there's sometimes a bit of terror at the beginning of a new book. Of the... Oh, I love it. I love it. I hate the part where you you have to edit it, but I love yeah. the part where you just dive in, because of course yeah. I do. Yeah, <laughs> full submersion. It's been so brilliant to talk. I adore you. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, and thank you from the pool, the most aptly named website you'll probably ever speak to. <laughs> I know, isn't that great? Good luck with the film and thank the publication you. and everything. Thank you.